In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how you can make any microphone sound good for your stream. We're gonna test out a couple different microphones ranging from $50 all the way up to $500. Prove that you don't actually need to spend a lot of money in order to get crispy audio. First up, coming in at $50, we have the USB powered compact, only condenser mic in the lineup, the Razer Siren Mini. Next, coming in at $100, you've seen them on every stage at every music venue, the simplest dynamic XLR mic that there is, the Shure SM58. Last but not least, coming in at $500, the mic she tells you not to worry about and is way too much mic for most streamers, the Shure SM7B. Both the SM7B and the SM58 will be going through an Elgato Wave XLR, which does cost an additional $200, but is one of the cheapest and easiest XLR interfaces to use. First, let's talk about mic placement. This is probably one of the easiest ways to make your microphone sound better. In order for your microphone to pick up your voice properly, it actually needs to be close to your mouth. For dynamic mics like the 58 and the 7B, you're gonna wanna keep them probably like like one to three inches away from your mouth. These are both dynamic microphones, so they're not as sensitive as a condenser. For this, I use a gauge of roughly three to four fingers. For something like the Razer Siren Mini, which is a condenser microphone, you can actually get away with being a little bit farther from it. I'd probably still keep it around three to four inches away from your mouth though. See, most microphones, especially directional microphones like the Shure SM58 or the SM7B, experience something called the proximity effect. This means that the closer the mic is to the source of audio, there's gonna be an increase in a low frequency response. And vice versa, even if you turn the volume up to match, the further your microphone is away, the less low frequencies there's gonna be. By keeping the microphone closer to the source of audio, you're allowing the microphone to pick up a larger range of frequencies, thus sounding fuller and giving more of that broadcast tone that everyone seems to want. If you don't already have one, I highly suggest picking up a boom arm for your microphone. This can ensure that you can get it as close to your face as possible. This one here was only $30 on Amazon and works great for lighter microphones. Or you can get something like the Elgato Wave Mic Arm or the Blue Compass if you have something heavier. Bonus tip, if your microphone is placed properly but you're still hearing a lot of echo or reverb or room sound, you actually might just not have enough stuff to absorb the frequencies. Things like curtains, carpets, pillows, stuffed animals, couches, beds, whatever. These are all things that can help absorb sound since it's not a hard surface for the audio to reflect off of. You could also consider making acoustic panels like I have behind me here or buying pre-made ones from like GIK acoustics or the Elgato wave panels, but please do not buy those really thin foam ones that are on Amazon. They're not gonna do nothing, but they're really not gonna help you as much as you think. The more things you have in the room, the less flat surfaces there are for sound waves to bounce off of. So make sure to take that into consideration when you're decorating your stream background. Next, let's talk about microphone direction. Most microphones have a front and a back to them. Now, something like the SM58, it's actually pretty easy to know where to speak into because there really isn't a back. But more USB microphones, it's harder to tell what is actually the front or the back. Some microphones you talk into it like this, some you talk into the front. This one specifically has a little light that turns on when it's plugged in. Most microphones use what is called a cardioid polar pickup pattern, which is the direction from the front of the mic where it picks up audio. This point here is the back of the mic where the least amount of sound will be picked up. And this is the front where the most amount of sound will be picked up. With our microphone placed in the right position and direction, not only will our voice sound the best on stream, but we can reduce sound like a keyboard and mouse clicks by having these items on the back side of the mic. Once your microphone is close enough to you, you might start noticing things like mouth clicks or popping sounds. One thing you can do for this is tilt your microphone just off axis so that it's still facing the direction of your mouth, but isn't quite in front where all of the air pressure is gonna be. This also helps it not block your face as much. Another option you could consider is getting a pop filter or a windscreen. Those will help reduce those popping sounds or plosives like pfft and the strong air pressure that goes along with it. Kind of felt like I was beatboxing there. Some microphones come with them, like the Shure SM7B, and some others don't. But it can make all the difference if you notice that your microphone is very reactive to these sounds. I will mention though that some windscreens can reduce the frequencies picked up by your microphone. So just be aware they can kind of change how it sounds. But I think for the most part, the pros outweigh the cons in this scenario. All right, let's put all of this into practice now and I'll show you even more ways to make your microphone sound good on stream. Starting off with the Razer Siren Mini, we've got it set up here on our boom arm. It is about four fingers away from my mouth, which is the perfect distance. It is on an angle or off axis so that we're not getting those plosives. It's also not in the way of my camera so that it is still close enough to my mouth but not you know, directly in front of me so that you can't see me on stream. We also made sure that the light is right in front of me, which indicates that that is the front of the microphone. First things first is we're gonna check our mic level. I like to keep my microphone between minus 12 and minus six dB. It's usually the most important thing on your stream. So I tend to keep it a little bit higher than everything else. So right now we are peaking 
below minus five, which means that our average is around minus 15 right now. Our volume slider is actually maxed out on OBS, so we're gonna have to use some different ways in order to make this work. The first thing we can do is actually check our microphone settings on our PC. You're gonna find this by going into your settings on your PC and going into system and then sound. We'll find our microphone here, make sure that it is selected, and then use this volume control to make sure that we are getting a good gain level. So you'll see when I turn this up, it is now going all the way red in OBS, which is not what we want. We're gonna turn this down a little bit and let's see where our average is sitting now. Now you're gonna to wanna to be able to hear yourself when you are doing this. So we're gonna go into our advanced audio properties and make sure that we have monitoring and output on. Okay, so you want to be speaking at the relative volume that you will be on stream. You want to make sure that you're projecting your voice so that your viewers can hear you clearly and so that you don't have to keep adjusting your microphone. So I would say that this is a pretty good level for us. So we're going to keep this there averaging around minus 10, peaking just below minus 5, so probably around minus 6, which is the perfect range for your voice levels. And again, make sure that you're talking at the same general volume throughout this. Make sure that you're at the same distance of your mic if you're too far away or if you get too close then that can change how your microphone reacts now you're not necessarily going to talk like this all the time on stream sometimes you get really excited and you're a little bit louder or sometimes you just like want to do some asmr or something like that so we're going to add some plugins that are going to help with that and help keep things a little bit more normalized while you are streaming there are three main filters or plugins that i like to use when i'm streaming the first one being eq now i'm on obs 29 and they actually recently added a three band eq which you can use but i personally don't like three band eqs because you don't have as much control so we're not going to use that. If you want to use that, you can. But what we did was we went to Google. We just downloaded Replugs, which is free plugins from Reaper. And they have a pretty good EQ that comes with it. So we're going to go into where it says VST2 plugins. And we're going to select the re-EQ plugin, open plugin interface, and you can add pretty much as many bands as you want in order to EQ your voice. So the first thing we're gonna add is a high pass filter. This is gonna cut out a lot of the lower frequencies that are unwanted that we really don't need. You're definitely wanna get cut out below 60 Hertz, but I recommend cutting out even like 100 to 150. If you have a lower voice, then maybe you'll wanna keep some more of those. And we have some ways that we can also boost a little bit of those to get more of that broadcasty kind of sound, but we're going to keep with uh, around 100 today for now. I personally like to have mine a little bit higher because I don't want those lower frequencies in my voice, but for the most part, as long as you're cutting out 60 and below, then, then you're doing good. Oh, and this allows you to kind of do a little bit of a boost before you cut, which is exactly what we kind of want. The next thing I like to add is a bit of a mid screen Goop. Now, a good way to know what frequencies you're actually dealing with is to boost them before you actually cut them. One thing that I recommend is making adjustments in around three decibels at a time. You're really not going to hear much of a difference if you don't go to around three decibels, but you don't want to be extracting so many decibels at once. As you can hear, that makes quite the difference in my voice. So we're going to do just like around minus three, minus four on this. And we can mess around with the frequency just to see like where we think it'll be better. We are keeping the bandwidth like pretty wide. We want to just bring those mid frequencies down just a little bit, just so they're not as present. We're going to go all the way over to the fourth band over here. And we're actually going to do a high shelf like it says, but we're going to go maybe around 2K and boost just again just a little bit and that's gonna add just a little bit more presence and like crispiness to your voice now this fourth band we don't have to do anything with it if we really wanted to we could go back and like boost a little bit more of the low end maybe narrow it down a bit and again like EQ is going to be different for each voice. This is what I like to do for my voice, but play around and these will just give you the general guideline of what you can do. So that's 
pretty much all that we're going to do for the EQ. I think that looks pretty good, sounds pretty good. And next we're going to add a compressor. So OBS has a built-in compressor. You can use the Reaper one if you want or another one if you have it, but we're just going to use this one. So the compressor is going to help a lot with louder volumes so you're not hurting your viewer's ears when you're on stream. Think of a compressor like two pieces of bread for a sandwich. It's kind of holding everything in together, making sure that it's not too quiet or too loud. That might be a bad analogy, but we're going to go with it. <laughs> Basically, it takes the loud parts and makes them quieter. So I like to keep my ratio at around three or four to one. The ratio is basically going to tell us how much of your audio signal gets compressed when you get too loud. A ratio of something like 10 to one is going to compress it a lot anytime you get really loud, where three or four is a little bit more natural sounding. Now your threshold is going to depend on I guess how much compression you want, but also what your volume is at. So we're averaging around minus 10, minus 12. So if our threshold was like up past like minus seven, that means that there's not gonna be any compression until we are as loud as minus seven dB. Where if we have it lower, say like minus 30 or something, that means that the compressor is going to be engaged pretty much all the time. Again, I like things sounding a little bit more natural, so I'm probably going to keep it where it kind of was, around minus 18, maybe minus 15. So anytime I'm louder than minus 15, the compressor is going to engage. Anytime I'm quieter than that, it's not. We want to have a really fast attack because it's usually the start of your sentences or your words that are going to be the loudest. And our release we want to keep actually pretty long. This is gonna make it sound, again, just more natural. Now, because you're compressing things, it kind of does tend to make things a bit quieter. So there's this thing called output gain that can bring back some of that overall volume if you feel like you're really missing some. I think we'll bring ours up a couple dB, especially since after we compressed things, our peak level is a little bit lower now. And the last plugin that I like to add in my chain is a limiter. A limiter is basically just a really intense compressor. It pretty much does the exact same thing, except your ratio is pretty much infinite. So it will never let you go over a certain threshold. I like to keep mine around minus one minus two and that basically just ensures that if there was a really loud sound that no matter what i would never go over zero db because that's really when you're going to clip when you're going to be distorted you don't want to be doing that and again we can keep the release kind of slow just so it's not as noticeable now if you really have some background noise that you really can't get rid of like your pc fans or your keyboard clicking or anything like that you can use things like noise suppression or noise gate to help get rid of that but i'm not going to talk about that in this video i'm going to focus on just these but let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you'd like to see now that's pretty much all i would do for the razor siren mini it's a really good sounding mic for the price but let's see how it compares to our other microphones. So for all my XLR mics, they're going to be going through the Wave XLR interface and using the Wavelink software. For this, this is where you'll set up the gain. Let's turn it down a bit so that we're making sure that our levels are around the same as the other microphone. That seems pretty good. Let's just go back to OBS and start adding some filters. Now again, the first one we're going to add is an EQ. We want to make sure that this is at the top of our chain. The order that your plugins are in is actually really important. And by that, I mean that it's actually going to change how your mic sounds depending on the order that it's in. I mean, do whatever you want, do whatever you think sounds best. But personally, I like to do EQ first, get rid of any of the frequencies that I don't want anymore, then use the compressor and limiter to only be compressing those sounds. Now, again, we're going to go down and we're going to pick our re-Q plugin. And we're gonna do a similar thing to what we did with the Razer Siren Mini. Again, gonna just make sure that we have a high pass filter, cut out any of those lower frequencies that we don't want. Then we're gonna do a bit of a mid scoop. I think around here is where we kinda wanna cut with this one. Cut that a little bit, go back here, give those low frequencies a little bit of a boost. And again, making sure that your microphone has a good environment is gonna be way more important than doing any of this stuff. And we will add a bit of a high shelf again. Check one, two. Now this is what it sounds if you add like way too much. It's like really, really bright 
almost tinny. Although I do find that this is a bit of a darker microphone. So that much actually like kind of helps this guy. This one we can see if there's any other frequencies we want to boost. Do we want to add some of those like higher vocal range ones or do we want to add more low end? I don't think we want to add more low end. I think we're actually okay. I think this is all we're gonna do for this one. We're done our EQ, now we can add our compressor. This is kind of what I have set for this. Our threshold, yeah, around minus 15. Really quick attack. We can probably bring the release up again. And ratio four to one. And I don't think we need to bring our output up too much because it's already pr pretty loud, I would say. We'll add our limiter, set this to, yeah, around like minus two. Maybe a little bit slower of a release. And then if we get really loud, we'll just never go over zero dB, which is exactly what we want. Now, although we did a similar process to the Razer Siren Mini, we did have to treat it a little bit differently. Because it is a different microphone, that means it has a different frequency response. So we just have to take that into consideration when we're EQing and processing this microphone. All right, next up is the microphone that everyone's been waiting for, the Shure SM7B. Let's get it on here. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is again, go into Wavelink and just make sure that our input gain is set well. Usually you'll see people using a cloud lifter or something, but the Wave XLR actually is able to take the amount of gain that it needs. And again, just making sure that our audio is hitting the level that we want it to. It is a little loud. So let's just turn it down just a little bit more, maybe around 50 dB. Yeah. That's like peaking. This is my average talking level, which I think is pretty good. Again, we're gonna start with our EQ, turn that on, and we're actually gonna reset it just so we can focus on what the Shure SM7B gives us. Now, although we already have a high pass filter in the Wavelink software, I'm gonna add another one just to make sure that none of those low rumbly frequencies are coming out in our stream. Now you can see the frequency response of this microphone is a lot different than a lot of the other ones, especially the Razer Siren Mini. Between the 100 and 200 Hertz range, you can see that there's like a way bigger bump, which is part of why people like this microphone so much, I think. So we're gonna cut out maybe a little bit higher on this one because there's a lot lower frequencies here. But we do still like to give that little bit of boost so we will make sure the bandwidth is kind of like that. And then we'll, again, just cut it like by three dB, just like a little bit of difference just to help shape the sound of the microphone. Then we'll go up to our high shelf, boost it by again, maybe around three dB. The frequency response on the Shure SM7B is like really good. So you don't have to do too much to it. We'll use this third one if we really want to. Now I know I said I didn't like the three band EQ and I'm only using three bands, but the reason why I don't like the other one is because you can't see what frequencies you're actually affecting. It's just a kind of a general like low, mid, high, where this you can really tweak what frequencies you are affecting. Now, yeah, we can like boost this up, kind of narrow the cue there and just kind of see like if there's anywhere that we really want to add. But yeah, I think it sounds good. I don't think we need anything. So yeah, we'll just keep it like that. All right, next is the compressor. Honestly, like we're probably gonna keep everything about the same. Now I am noticing that sometimes when I get really loud, it will peak up to zero. So maybe we'd bring it down by like maybe a decibel. And that seems pretty good. That's like where I generally talk. And again, the limiter, it, we're not really gonna do anything different. Keep the threshold the same, keep the release the same because yeah, we just like don't wanna go above that level. So there you go. You can use three simple plugins, compressor, EQ, and limiter to help make your mic sound better on stream. Remember that a USB microphone is perfectly good for streaming on YouTube and Twitch. Your audio bitrate is capped and compressed so much that having a high-end microphone really isn't gonna make that much of a difference. I only have the Shure SM7B because I went to audio school and I needed something for that. If you learned anything in this video today, make sure to comment what you learned down below. If you're not sure what to watch next, you can check out this video right here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace.